Yo guys, what's going on? I know it's been a while again, but I'm trying to get back into it, I'm trying to aim for like one or two videos a month. And this video is going to be kind of about the realistic use of AI for businesses. So I don't know about you guys, but I've been seeing a lot of YouTube videos in my algorithm, in my feed about people who are making 10, 20, 50K a month through AI automations or AI something. And I've worked with these things. I've been working with NADN now, this uh, software tool for a couple months now. So I know what they're capable of. And I also know what businesses are willing to pay for these kind of automations. And so mainly what I wanted to talk about is landing your first client. So I kind of want to quickly go through a story of how I actually landed my first client and got someone to pay me real money to build these automations and then kind of summarize high level what I've learned so that anyone who's building automations, whether it's with make.com, edit and just simply code or working with AI can take something away from the video. And so after the high level AI stuff, I do want to bring it back into some any specifics and just what I think overall about the frameworks with one kind of main question I have for anyone who has used the framework as well. And then finally, I do want to talk about maybe the most important thing, which is the difference when building these AI automations for an actual business. And an example I'm going to show is um, when I had to implement getting feedback. So after sending all of these emails and creating drafts, for example, one of the features that the client wanted to implement is a way for employees to give feedback to the AI. So it continually gets better and hopefully doesn't need the feedback anymore. And and it then has a sort of way that you can implement that, but it isn't sufficient. So I had to build a whole other workflow or another system that can make it possible for the employees to give feedback to the main system that you were actually paid to build for. But all right, enough of that. Let's get into actually how I landed my first client. And that is through a company that I work for called the Beton Border. It's a Dutch company and it translates to the concrete drillers. And I actually work for them in the field. So I was, let's say, a concrete driller. It's not exactly what I did, but let's say I was doing that. On the side, I also helped them with their website. Long story short, their company got hacked by the IT team. And then there was an opportunity for me to kind of help bring the website back online. And that's how they figured out that I can work with websites. And yeah, I became their IT person. And when I was working in the office one day with the actual boss, he was telling me, or we were talking about a lot of tech stuff. We were talking about crypto, AI, and all these stuff. And he was very excited about mainly AI and the future it has, and maybe the potential it has to kind of replace some of the administration stuff he had to do. So we talked, to be honest, for way too long. We should have been working. And at the end of the conversation, I actually just proposed to him, like, why don't we just test it out? Why don't we see if we can already kind of get some of the benefits from this AI. Let's see if we can start with the most simple task, administrative task we have at this company. And let's see if we can automate it. And if we can start there, then maybe there's room for more complicated tasks. So he was kind of intrigued. He liked the idea. And what we decided to do is out of all of these activities, which we offer, so these are all of our services, we decided to pick the easiest one and see if we could automate end to end when a client sends an email to us sending an offer. And that happened to be um, ventilation. So when a user sends an email, when a client sends an email about a ventilation request, it's usually pretty simple. We only need to know a few things to be able to send an offer or a quotation. So we started here. And the important thing is that I also made a sacrifice. So he wasn't fully convinced in the beginning. And the way that I would say I kind of convinced him or helped make the sale, let's say, is by offering a 50-50. So if it didn't work, if we can build the automation, then he only pays me half of my hourly wage. So that would have been half of 30 euros an hour. That's what I'm getting paid for this automation. If it works, I get paid 30 euros an hour. I guess it's almost the same as 30 US dollars an hour. And if it doesn't work out, then I get paid 15 an hour. So lessons learned, start small and take risks. That's basically how I would say I landed this uh, client. So now that I landed this client, how did I actually build the automation and 
what have I learned on the way from a high level? So when I first started, I did just a quick Google search to see what other people have been doing in order to automate email answering. And the most common way of doing it I found was through vector databases. So you basically store previous emails in the past. And then when you get a new incoming email, you do a similarity check to get like a bunch of similar emails and you see how we replied to them in the past. So I tried that. That was the first approach. So you see that here. I can actually just hopefully execute the flow. This kind of these three nodes here, they're basically getting emails related to this ventilation. And then I was testing out whether in this vector database, I was getting these similar emails. So here you can see these are the inputs. And here I have, for example, text of different people who are requesting for ventilation at, in their house. And then here on the right side, you get the reply that we gave to those incoming emails. So what's important to note here? Let's take a look at these emails. So this is one reply. It's quite long. Whatever you get the message. It's actually the whole conversation between the clients. That's why it's so long. This could be three or four emails. But if this is the next email, this is the reply. And you'll start to see a pattern if I scroll, the emails look very similar. And what was happening is basically we answer to most incoming emails with a template. And we change small things to answer the, the client's questions. So maybe we said we put one sentence at the beginning of the email that answers the client's question. And the rest is basically just a standard template. So now, if you give your AI agent, which is here, this vector database, and you tell it to get five similar emails, what you're going to get is basically 90% of the same template, and 10% of like these little kind of answers we gave to clients, which are the important things that you should take from the email, because they're the things that are changing. Those are the things specific to the incoming email. But the AI doesn't really know that all it sees is, hey, I got five emails that all include this template. I need to include the template as well. So it basically just started creating emails that looked like the template without ever answering the client's questions. So uh, vector databases, I haven't had much success with them. So where did I go next? That's this strategy. And what I did was, so same thing, I'm getting a bunch of emails related to ventilation. And in here I got, let's say 200 or 300 of them. And I actually sent it to an AI agent and his job was to get a Google Docs. Let's say it started off empty and it would, for every single email, learn the rules of our business. So it would say like, okay, in this email, I learned this. In this email, I learned this. And it would, whenever it learned something new, it would update that document. And then next time it run, it would get the document again, check the new incoming email, see if it learned something new. So it had to be new. Then it would add um, it would add that information in the document. And after two or 300 emails, you basically have a document that has that contains every single little rule about our business and about ventilation specifically. So that so that document looked like something like this, except it was way more disorganized because the AI basically just like put a bunch of information in with no yeah with no styling. So what I did is I copied all of that into another AI and asked it to make it look nice so that it's more human readable. And now you see basically you have all of our business uh, rules that like the side like the depth of the holes, how deep we can um, drill the prices for certain things like the time it takes the prices for all different products and it goes on. So now that I've kind of built like this knowledge base, I'm going to feed that every single time into the prompt of my actual AI agent. And this way, it's not influenced by a template, but it just has additional knowledge. But here is where I want to get into some NNN specifics that I've been kind of struggling with. One of the things that I want to avoid at all costs when building these AI automations is tool calling. I don't have enough confidence in tool calling yet. So what I mean by that is if you tell your AI agent in the prompt very clearly to use a tool, it doesn't 100% of the time use it. So I don't want to put this document in a tool call and then tell my AI to get it so that it reads the business rules. Since 
it should read the business rules 100% of the times, no exception. So what I want to do is just fetch it somewhere earlier in the flow and then just pass it on to this AI agent. But I haven't really found a nice way to do that in NADEN yet. Like you can't really branch off and just go do some work and then kind of come back to the main branch and then pass everything to uh, the AI agent, for example. So I don't know if you guys have had similar problems with any then since one it's more reliable than like relying on your ai agent to call a tool and two it's just a lot cheaper because what tool calling does is it the ai first calls a tool and then when it gets the information from the tool it reprompts itself so you have to pay twice you have to make two api calls instead of just passing everything into the ai at once so for me it seems like a no-brainer but i haven't found like an easy way to do this and then the second thing that I've kind of been struggling with and it end with is, is this merge hell that you kind of run into when you need one input for multiple things. So for example, I've implemented a feedback system where employees of the company can answer or give feedback to specific emails that the AI has created. And that uses a vector database. So I know I said up here I haven't had much success and there's not much feedback yet so I can't say how successful the feedback implementation is working but the idea is that you give feedback on specific emails and then you use a vector a similarity check to get emails that look the same and check on what the feedback was so that the AI can hopefully better improve to related or to similar emails in the past. So I need the incoming email to check for the feedback. And same thing, I don't want to use a tool call. I just want to get it 100% of the time and then pass it in one go in the prompt so that it's cheaper and more reliable. And then I need to merge back because now I need, this thing doesn't output the incoming email. So the incoming email is used to get the feedback, but it doesn't output the incoming email. So then I need to merge it back with the incoming email so that I can pass that to the AI and then the AI doesn't output the incoming email again or I could ask it to but then again you're dealing with probabilities maybe for some reason it decides not to include it in the JSON that it outputs so for 100% certainty I branch off again and merge these two to get the email and then there I finally send the final email so I don't know if someone has found like a solution to these two any then specific problems if you do let me know because I've been trying to clean up this workflow and make a template. So become a creator on any end so that you guys can just use this template for free. But I don't want to post it looking like this. Like I want it to be way more clear what's going on. Okay, but so I hope you guys get the gist of it now. We basically have a knowledge base that drives most of its fine tuning. So how exactly it knows how our business operates. And we have a feedback system that employees can reply to the email to a specific address and then slowly it should be getting better. And in the actual prompt, I have my task or the task that it has written in Markdown. So hopefully it's clearer. I have a summary of what ventilation in the crawl space is. I have its instructions. I have the standard template that we normally send to clients. So it knows what's already been mentioned. Then I have the actual incoming email that it needs to reply to. Here, I include all of the business rules that it's already learned. And then finally, I include some emails, some examples of like uh, what came in and then what we replied as a business in the past. Yeah, it's quite a big context, I guess. But most of these models have plenty of space for the context. So that's not really been a problem. And then what is the result? So right now we're in this trial period where we're kind of seeing what it looks like. And the beginning is the email that came in. And the output is what the AI would have sent. And so here you can then send an email to a different address that's going to trigger another workflow that is going to save feedback if you want to give feedback to this email. But here you see the structure of every email is basically a standard template, which is this below. Like uh, we have sent you an offer, blah, blah, blah. And here above is this actual like dynamically created content by the AI to specifically match the client's request. If the client's request was really simple, 
it just only sends the template. If it wasn't, it tries to kind of tailor its response to the human. Then what's going to happen is the email or the AI actually makes a draft in your Gmail. And if the employee at our company approves that email by pressing send, we then have to trigger another workflow that another AI workflow that's going to check to make sure that that email was sent. And if it was sent, then send the quotation that is in our CRM, our customer relation management tool. And that's kind of how it works like end to end. But you can see if I if I duplicate this and I go to the other tab, which is our feedback quotation, it basically has a switch. If it's feedback, it does the feedback loop. And later, what we're going to implement is the quotation where it's going to trigger another workflow that sends the actual quotation. So this is how it's working end to end. I've got some big ideas actually on how to improve the system since right now it only answers the first email. And maybe if the client has more questions in the past, we're going to have to implement some kind of reinforcement fine tuning model that's capable of generalizing and answering any kind of email. So yeah, I'm kind of excited about this project and I think it's going to go well. If you guys enjoy this, let me know. I'll keep making this kind of content and see where and what we can automate.